गुड मॉर्निंग एम आई ऑडियबल यस सर यू रोड बी ओके थैंक यू the other day someone asked me about what is 90 by 10 ratio where which we used to uh, uh, measure inequality within a country oh, what we can do is we can uh, we can plot the uh, uh, income distribution of a country let's say the income is distribution is like that this is a hypothetical uh, more like a normal distribution usually uh, income is not normally distributed they are positively distributed so uh, so positively skewed distributed <coughs> so what is this 90 by 10 ratio which we use to measure inequality within a country each say if you have say this this is your here you are taking income and here you are taking frequency or something like that, your x axis <coughs> or the uh, you can say probability density something like that. okay so like say in say for income y1 below this y1 let's say 10% of population is there and similarly say this is your income y9 uh, so like here you have y2 in between here sir, you have another yeah sir. Yeah. Are you writing something, sir? Yes. Oh, it is yes. not visible. Oh. Ah, I I see. Even I am not able to see. now it comes okay so uh, let me draw it in another color so it, it, there is a lag guys this too much of lag anyway uh, so let's see here you are uh, taking your uh, in y axis you are taking income and your x axis you are taking probability distributions or the frequency okay this is what uh, i have done then you are plotting the income of the uh, country let's say the income distributions look like this bell shaped type of curve usually as i said uh, income does not follow a normal distributions but but a positively distribution let's assume it is following this distribution so for the, the uh, income y1 there are 10 percent of populations below this income y1 uh, similarly another 10% of population uh, uh, between y1 and y2 here also you have uh, between y1 and y2 there is 10% of population say you have y3 here also between y2 and y3 you have another 10 10% of population and so forth so we have like this y4 and we we have here y9 so uh, if you have y8 is somewhere here then between y8 and y9 also we have another 10% of population that's why you have 10% of population in the in this tail right hand side tail as well which i am saying that's right so here uh, more than uh, y9 income is by the 10% of population as well okay so what you see uh, less than uh, income y1 
there are 10 percent of people and uh, more than income uh, y9 uh, is uh, 10 percent of people <coughs> these y1 and y9 incomes are known as the uh, 90th percentile so your y1 is known as your uh, 10th percentile percentile whereas your y9 is known as your 90th percentile okay so if you get the income mean income of this 10 percent at the uh, uh, top that is at the right hand side which i have read, uh, said is as 10 let's define that as y9 bar is the mean income of the 10 percent of population uh, at the uh, top of your distribution similarly y1 bar is the mean income of the uh, let me change the color so, okay. so you have y9 bar is the mean income of the uh, top 10 percent uh, populations and y1 one bar is the mean income or the average income of the bottom 10 percent of the populations now if you get y9 bar divided by y1 bar that is what we call is the uh, 90 by 10 ratio because as i said y1 is your 10th percentile and y9 is your 90th percentile so this is called your 90 by 10 ratio so as you can see if this ratio increases that implies more average income for the people at the top well, uh, and less uh, average income uh, for the people at the bottom that is why it is called as 90 by 10 ratio as this 90 by 10 ratio increases your uh, inequality within a country increases okay then uh, someone else also asked how we can explain the current scenario we are talking about earlier what has been happening with that hockey stick type of growth and so forth so, uh, so uh, someone asked what we can uh, say about today so what we have observed uh, uh, what we have observed in our uh, previous class on monday uh, that we see an upward uh, uh, Turn like the kink in a hockey stick repeated for few of the vari variables or you can say few of the uh, indicators one of the indicator is your gross domestic product per capita uh, and then the productivity of labor like the light uh, produced per hour of work and then uh, connectivity of the various parts of the world where we see how at, at how what speed we, we see the news travel from one part of the country to one part of the world to the other part of the world like we have the uh, mutiny against the british rules in 1857 and so forth and now if, if you see mm, the capital C is in the US sort of thing. Those example illustrate that connectivity. And then we see impact of the economy on global environment. Uh, uh, for, ex uh, for example, we looked at the carbon emissions or the carbon dioxide uh, uh, levels in our atmosphere. And we see they are, they follow, these are the four things they followed. Uh, uh, those uh, what you can say uh, uh, similar pattern so what we have observed 
for the vast majority of human history we didn't see significant changes happening uh, but for the last 200 years or so what we are observing is the, the, the world is changing very fast. We, we, we can see the change from uh, uh, in the living conditions uh, 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 as well as we are observing noticeable changes from, gen from one generation to another generation in terms of living conditions, in terms of pro labor productivity and so forth. So how can we explain the change from a world in which these living conditions change little, uh, uh, as I said, in, in a, in, for the vast majority of human history, unless there was an epidemic or a war. So if there were war or epidemic, then the uh, there was uh, significant changes particularly happened in human history. But now, even without war and epidemic, obviously your epidemic and war changes even current day, but then now without even then, the world is changing very fast. How can we explain that? An important part uh, or important answer to this question uh, is what we call capitalism or capitalist revolution. The capitalist revolution which emerges in the 18th century and uh, that eventually spread uh, to most of the world is one of the uh, key reasons wh why we can see the significant changes are happening uh, and noticeable changes are happening from generation to generation. So what do we understand by this capitalism? Capitalism and economic system, uh, capitalism is an economic system where three institutions play vital roles. These are your private property, markets, and farms. These are the uh, uh, three uh, important institutions that organize the production and distribution of goods and services in the economy. So uh, what do you mean by these institutions is in by institution we mean the different set of laws and social custom regulating production and distribution in different ways uh, in families, in private business and government bodies. So what we see is in capitalism, private property, markets, and farm are the institutions that uh, are important in organizing production and distribution of goods and services in the economy. So what we mean by these private property, markets, and <clears throat> Parts. Private property implies that you can enjoy your possession in a way that you choose. Say if you have any possession, let's say you have an apple, so you own that apple. So when you own that apple, that you can enjoy that apple in a way that you choose as well as you can exclude other from use of it if you wish and you can dispose that apple by gift 
gift or sell to someone who become the owner of that apple so private property implies if if you have own something then it is your wish how you you want to uh, use it and when you are using it you if you wish you may uh, not allow others to uh, use it and you can dispose of anything you have own uh, by gift or sell to someone who become the owner of that uh things uh, you had possessed so uh, now uh, the new owner uh, will enjoy the possession the way the new owner wants to uh, use it and the new owner if he or she wishes uh, to exclude other from use it then uh, uh, he or she will exclude other uh, from using that thing so that is what we call is the private property so why it is important because if you don't have private property uh, then you will not able to sell anything because you don't do not own this so uh, protecting the private property is one of the key uh, uh, things of the government in the modern uh, economics then the uh, uh, second is market uh, what do we mean by markets uh, are the markets are a way of connecting people who may mutually benefits so markets are a way of connecting people who may we mutually benefit by exchanging goods and services through a process of buying and selling so markets uh, are a way of connecting people who may mutually benefit so those people are connecting they may mutually benefit by exchanging goods and services through process of buying and selling so that is what we call is the market in the market uh, people comes together uh, uh, through uh, uh, maybe physically or maybe using um, any other means of communications they uh, 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 come together and exchange goods and services through a process of buying and selling which may mutually benefits those people are uh, uh, coming together so that is what we call the markets and the most important part of this uh, capitalism is the emergence of the farm a farm is a way of organizing production it is a way of organizing production Uh, which has following characteristics what are the characteristics of a farm which is organizing production the characteristics of the farms are one or more individuals own a set of capital capital goods uh capital goods that are used in production so one or more individuals own a set of capital goods that are used in uh, production as i said earlier in a, uh, uh, in economic sense when we are producing something usually we use three types of inputs one is your material inputs otherwise known as your intermediate inputs the second one is uh, your uh, labor input and the third one is your capital inputs so those who own the capital uh, inputs which are used in the process of production are known as the owner of the farm and these owners then hire workers by paying 
or hire employees by paying wages and salary to them. So uh, then they hire workers uh, to uh, uh, by paying wages and salary. So the owners, who, the, who are the owners of the uh, farm? Those who own capital, uh, capital goods which are used in the uh, process of production in the same farm. And those owners, they hire employees uh, by paying wages and salary and uh, they direct them what to do and how you know, the, they direct employees in the production of uh, the goods and uh, services. So then the goods and services produced by these employees along with the uh, use of capitals and other material goods. So whatever the produce, goods and service produce then become the properties of the owner. So the goods now the private become the private property of the owners. Uh, uh, so then the owners sell the goods and services uh, on markets with the intention of making profit. So uh, one of the primary objective of the farms is to get profits. The capitals owners uh, the capital, the capital owners, the, uh, those who owns the capital become the, are the owners, and these owners hire workers by paying uh, uh, wages and uh, salaries, and these workers uh, using material inputs along with the capital, uh, capital's uh, goods, uh, produce goods and services. These goods and services become the private property of the owners and these owners uh, sell the goods and uh, services on markets with the intention of making profit. If, if all characteristics are satisfied but not the profit objective, then uh, that may not be uh, uh, the farm. As you will see later how these <coughs> Uh, farms are different from our family as well as your uh, government. So these are the key institutions of the capitalism. However, before this capitalism emerges in the 18th century, we have also other key economic institutions uh, out of these, particularly there are two uh, uh, key institution already existed, like your private property as well as your uh, uh, markets. However, this farm make this capitalism more dynamic. And uh, and uh, when you have a dynamic capitalism, then we will see that the economy grows at a very uh, high uh, high speed. <clears throat> So uh, earlier, uh, the key institutions uh, in it very, very primitive, in a way, say, uh, uh, maybe uh, thousands years back, uh, the key economic institutions are your private property and families, where most of the things were uh, produced by the families working together rather than the farms with owners and employees. So maybe thousand years back, uh, the key economic institutions were private property and families. So the families was producing goods and uh, uh, services uh, working together, uh, but not the farms. Uh, in some countries or the some society, government has been uh, the key institutions which control the productions uh, and distributions of goods and services. In such cases, uh, the, uh, in society where government uh, has been the institutions controlling production and uh, distribution is called centrally planned economic system. It 
existed, for example, uh, in Soviet Union, East Germany, uh, and many other Eastern European countries prior to uh, 1990s. Uh, uh, even today, the government and families are essential part of the uh, working of every economy. Most economies uh, uh, today are capitalists. Since uh, 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 most of us live in these capitalist economies, it is uh, maybe uh, easy to overlook the uh, or may we may underestimate the importance of institutions that are fundamental for capitalism to work well. Uh, uh, if you see our human history, the extent of private property has varied. Uh, in some societies, uh, such as the hunters and gatherers, as our uh, primitive uh, distance ancestors, uh, uh, almost nothing except your personal ornaments and clothing was owned by individual. Uh, in other society, crops and animals were their private property, but not land. But the, the right to use land was granted to families by consensus among members of a group or, or by the chief of the uh, group without allowing the family to sell the plot. So in that case, if you are not allowed to sell the plot then uh, or the sell, sell your land, then you do not have the private property because private properties allow is used to use use the land the way uh, you want to use it and uh, you can exclude other from using it and then you can dispose it by gift and selling. Uh, in uh, say uh, uh, Russia or uh, the selling of land uh, is not permitted to private individual. You mean they can cultivate and do all those things, but it's not allowed to, they are, uh, the individuals are not allowed to sell the lands. Therefore, uh, in Russia, uh, we may say uh, there are no private properties in case of land. In case of India, uh, land is, uh, you cannot say there is absolute private property because, uh, uh, but there is some degree of uh, private property. So it is not black and white sort of thing. There are some gray areas in the uh, context of private property. For instance, in case of India, if you own a piece of land, then you can uh, uh, use it and then uh, you can sell it also or you can gift it. Okay. But if you own a piece of land which is uh, as a, a agricultural land, you cannot build a house over there. If you have a water land, uh, then you cannot be, build, build a, a commercial complex. Even in an agricultural field, you cannot build a commercial complex or a, even a residential house. So what we see is, uh, 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 though there is uh, there is private property uh, in terms of using the land and then sell, selling the land or gifting it, but there are some restrictions of using it. Uh, only you can use for the intended purpose you have been given uh, rights on the land. Uh, but if you are uh, changing it, then you need to get government approval. So in case of India, you can say we have private properties on land, but maybe it is not complete private property, you can say in that context. Uh, sim uh, uh, similarly, in, in uh, US uh, and in some part of Europe also, 
uh, when we have slave, uh, slave system was there, then slaves were treated as private property. So uh, if you are, if you are a, a, an owner of slaves, then you can sell the slaves to somebody else. So in that case, we uh, human beings are also subject to uh, private properties. <laughs> Uh, so as I said earlier, uh, the key things in the capitalist economy is the, uh, along with the private property, is the capitals, because those capital goods, who is owning those capital goods become the owner of the uh, farm, and in consequently, he or she or a group of individuals, those who are owning the capitals, become the owner of the goods produced in that uh, uh, farm. So what are these capital goods? The capital goods are the equipments you can think of, buildings and other durable inputs that are used in the producing goods and services. Sometimes, uh, uh, also, we can say patent and other intellectual property rights as part of the capital goods. Uh, and uh, the other part of here, as I see, as you see, is the market. And this market is different from. Uh, other uh, tie in the the market is is a place or you can say is a way of connecting people uh, for exchange of goods and uh, services which mutually benefits those people are coming together <laughs> not maybe necessarily physically but uh, uh, that gives them uh, benefits the uh, the other way of uh, transfer of goods because markets in the markets what we do is we transfer goods and services from one person to the other person there are other way of transform uh, transferring uh, transfer of goods and uh, uh, services from one person to the uh, other persons uh, such as your theft and gift so this theft and gift uh, are different from markets uh, basically in three different ways. One is your reciprocate. One is your reciprocate. The other one is your voluntary and the third one is competition third one is your competition so uh, in a theft or in in in, in a gift you do, do not have uh, reciprocate so, so one person transfer of a goods or services to another uh, may not be directly reciprocated in terms of when there is gift and theft but in case of re, you know, markets uh, it is directly reciproc uh, reciprocated by transfer uh, in one direction uh, uh, maybe in, in terms of a money or a promise of letter transfer, like in case of when you are buying cre in, in cre uh, credit cards and so forth. So when you are purchasing a book, then you are giving one, say, 1,000 rupees to the bookseller and the bookseller is giving you uh, uh, the book. So there is a reciprocate, reciprocate transfer. So uh, from your from your direction, it is the money which you are giving, and from the uh, bookseller uh, point of view, it is the book the bookseller is giving to you. And then 
in case of <coughs> markets it is voluntary like in case of uh, theft it is not voluntary though there is a transfer of goods from one person to the other person but it is not vol voluntary so when uh, uh, individuals uh, connect together to uh, exchange goods and services uh, uh, which benefits uh, benefits them uh, uh, in the market is uh, voluntary but maybe theft uh, is not so market is different from uh, theft as well uh, and in most markets there is competition in most market there is competition so uh, uh, a seller charging a high prices uh, uh, will find uh, less number of buyers similarly uh, a buyer uh, wants to pay a, a, a very less then it will get only uh, on, only a, a, a less number of uh, seller will be interested so what you see is uh, there are uh, uh, presence of competitions in the market uh, if a seller charging a high prices will find that buyer prefer to buy from other competing uh, sellers <coughs> Uh, but as I said, uh, this private property and markets alone do not define our capitalism, uh, but uh, it is the firm which is very important part of our uh, 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 the uh, capital, uh, capitalism economic uh, structure. Uh, so, uh, the firms are different from family as well as uh, non-profit organizations and the government in varied way in different ways uh, 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 also the family business are not the firms because in a family business most of the people working are family members and similarly, non-profit organization, even they producing something, still then it is not a firm because profit motive is not there. Similarly, employee-owned cooperatives and government-owned uh, entities such as our railway and our power sectors are not firm. Uh, these are not firms either because they do not make a profit like in case of non-profit uh, organization or because the owner are not private individual who own the uh, capital goods of that producing farm. So for the instance, uh, employees owned cooperatives. The capital goods are uh, owned by all employees. In that case, uh, it is not uh, uh, a farm. Similarly, in the government-owned uh, entities, the private individuals are not owning the capital. Like in case of railway, the capital uh, goods are owned by the government, not by private individuals. So the, they are, uh, and again, as I said, the family business. There are no higher workers. Uh, uh, it's Oh, uh, uh, I mean, those are may not be fun. These farms uh, uh, were playing a very minor role uh, in our uh, uh, previously existed economic system. Now in the capitalism, they become the predominant organization for production of goods and services. This expanded role of firm uh, created another market in the uh, capitalist economic structure. The other market is known as your labor market. because of the 
uh, expansions of the uh, uh, expansion of our uh, what it call is the farms as the uh, predominant uh, organization for production these has led to emergence of another uh, market known as your labor market so this uh, uh, labor markets uh, is a market where employers or the owners uh, offer wages to individual who may agree to work under their directions so in the labor market the employers are the uh, are the demand side of the market and employees or the workers are the supply side of the uh, 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 labor market so the expansion of these farms has led to uh, 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 what you call what you can see uh, as the uh, uh, another market uh, that is your uh, labor market another key feature of the farm uh, which differentiates it from families and the government is how quickly your farm can burn expand contract and die so uh, 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 the farm is different from families and government because of the uh, uh, how quickly the farm can be burn expand contract and die if you think of the example of facebook or maybe amazon these are the uh, uh, farms which have uh, uh, come off uh, in the last 15 20 years only and they have expanded across the globe so in a very short time period they expanded so much they uh, uh, expanded so much because they can hire people as workers because they can hire people as workers so they can uh, uh, expand uh, very uh, quickly similarly the farms can contract and die very quickly for instance before facebook you have another social media uh, uh, such as your orkut and uh, which was probably uh, uh, coming to existence in the uh, late 90s and it's, uh, by uh, 2010 it has disappeared so in uh, 12 13 years uh, it uh, expanded and then contracted and died so these are the example these are the uh, characteristics which distinguish our family and the government from the farm both family and government produces goods and services as well but they are different from the farms because of these four characteristics how quickly they can burn uh, expand uh, uh, contract and that so a, a, a successful uh, farm can grow from just a few employees to a global company such as your amazon and uh, as i said your uh, uh, facebook's uh, uh, in a few years uh, a farm can do this because they can able to hire additional workers or employees from the labor market uh, and also they can attract funds to finance the purchase uh, uh, of the capital goods they need to expand for uh, production farm can die in a few years too 
This is because a farm that does not make profit will not have enough money uh, to continue employing and producing. Therefore, the farms shrink and some of the people who work there uh, will lose their jobs uh, and so forth. Similarly, uh, uh, if you compare this with our family, where we are producing, if, if, if in a farm, some workers uh, are non-performing, then the farm can remove them. But think of in a family, if there are uh, people, uh, individuals who are not uh, uh, maybe a, a productive in the family work, we may, it's highly possible to disown those uh, family members. But a farm can disown some employees if they are become non-productive. Uh, so the family cannot dismiss the children uh, as a part might get rid of unproductive workers. Uh, similarly, the government bodies uh, tend to have limited in their capacity to expand uh, if successful and usually protect from failure if they perform uh, uh, poorly. So this is how uh, uh, family and governments are different from our, uh, 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 what you can see, uh, farms. So uh, we'll stop here today, but we'll, we'll continue uh, these discussions in the next class, Monday. Uh, this capitalism has led to one of the key things what we call is a cap uh, specializations and uh, uh, we'll see how this uh, yeah. uh, this leads to uh, specializations and we'll see how uh, uh, specialization help uh, in producing more and more that we'll discuss in the next class let me